The printing press is widely regarded as one of the most important inventions in human history. Over the centuries of its existence, the techniques for printing has dramatically changed. One technique that is now becoming more and more obsolete but was heavily used during the 1900s is called letterpress printing. This technique involves using what's known as movable types, which are small metal plates embossed with specific alphabetical letters and characters. Now, to easily organize these metal plates, they were usually stored in something called a typecase. A typecase is a compartmentalized wooden box with sections for each letter and character to be stored within. Traditionally, these typecases were designed in such a way that uppercase letters were stored in a separate uppercase above all the lowercase letters. And that's why we literally call them uppercase and lowercase. In a similar fashion, the shift key on your keyboard is named as such because typewriters actually had to mechanically shift the metal hammer assembly to instead strike with an uppercase letter. How many people in the world share the same birthday as you? Well, most statistics from countries across the globe show that on an annual scale, people are born at more or less a frequent rate with only slight variations. Most estimates suggest that every day of the year will have roughly the same amount of births. So if we take all 7.3 billion people in the world today and divide them by 365, not counting leap years, we get exactly 20 million people who share the same birthday as you. But remember that's a very rough estimate. Some days and months are indeed more popular than others. For example, in the US there are more people born on September 16 than any other day of the year. In fact, September has 10 of the most common birthdays overall. And given that it's the ninth month of the year, I guess Santa Claus and New Year's Eve really makes people want to have a baby. The least common birthday is the 29th of February, but that's kind of cheating given that the day only occurs during leap years. The second least common birthday is the 25th of December. If your birthday is in fact the 29th of February, then there's not 20 million of you, but instead only 4.8 million. In 1963, an underwater volcanic eruption occurred off the southern coast of Iceland and continued until 1967 when the eruption finally stopped. This eruption led to the creation of the small island now known as Surtsey. During this time, the island was heavily monitored by various geologists and botanists as life forms gradually colonized the barren island. But in 1969, they found something rather strange namely a tomato plant. Not exactly a plant you would expect to find near Iceland. So how did it get there? Well, they soon discovered that it seemed to be growing out of a peculiar brownish pile on top of the hardened lava. It suddenly dawned on them that the plant was growing out of a pile of human feces that must have contained a tomato seed. What will happen between now and, oh, I don't know, say 8.4 million years from now? Maybe we're the most advanced civilization in the galaxy, cruising around in our very own Enterprise-class starships. Maybe humankind has gone completely extinct, self-imposed or not. Maybe we've been replaced by some other intelligent beings. Whatever ends up happening to us, what will happen in 8.4 million years from now is that the tiny satellite Lagios 1 will crash land somewhere on Earth. Hopefully not the ocean though, because that would be a long wait for nothing. You see, what's interesting about this particular satellite orbiting our planet as we speak is that it contains a plaque designed by Carl Sagan. The plaque will tell the humans or beings of that time when and where the satellite was launched and the number 1 through 10 in binary. It also carries images of the arrangement of Earth's continents from 268 million years ago, the present and their estimated arrangement in 8.4 million years from now. Just imagine if such a satellite crash landed on the planet today, containing proof of other intelligent beings that once existed on the planet but are now long extinct. Antarctica is probably the last place on Earth you would expect to go on a date. Sometime last year, an American scientist conducting research on Antarctica opened up a dating app on his phone to see if he could find anyone within this region. To his surprise, he did, so he tried to contact her. 
A few minutes later, they matched and the woman turned out to be located a couple of kilometers away working with their own separate team. A few weeks later, they met for the first time and who knows what happened after that. You know, you, you really come to terms with how bad your game is when someone in goddamn penguin land goes on more dates than you do. One of, if not the, longest work of fiction ever written is a Super Smash Bros. fanfiction at over 4 million words long. As a comparison, the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy is only 481,000 words long, and the entire Harry Potter book series is around 1.1 million words long. The longest series of works of fiction is a German science fiction series known as Perry Roden, and first began publication in 1961. The total word count for all the novels combined is estimated to be around 150 million. But the title for the largest collection of books ever written goes to an encyclopedia called Suku Quanshu. It was a Chinese encyclopedia written and scribed between 1773 and 1782. Once completed, it contained roughly 800 million Chinese characters. Though it's not really fair to compare it this way as Chinese characters are very different from, for example, Germanic languages like English. Most people seem to have a strong fear for sharks, while others simply find them very interesting. Discovery Channel's annual Shark Week is only one about many examples of this. This public fascination as well as fear of sharks has led many to believe that these creatures are pure killer machines and that they kill anywhere from hundreds to thousands of people every year. This really couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, if sharks could think like we do, they would be absolutely terrified of us. Since we began recording shark attacks in 1580, only 548 people worldwide have reportedly been killed by a shark, 232 of which occurred in Australia alone. For example, last year, three people in total were killed by shark attacks. Meanwhile, humans kill 11,415 sharks every single hour. In 1969, the first information ever transmitted across the ARPANET, which would eventually become the Internet, was to be the message LOGIN. But once they had sent the letters L and O, the receiving system crashed. So once they got the system up and running again, they had to start the process all over and began sending the message LOGIN once more. This means that the first information ever sent across the Internet was LOL. -L. Ever wondered why you often see birds like geese, for example, flying these V-shaped formations? It's something called vortex surfing, and they do this because their wings basically create upwards lifting twisting coils of air behind them called the vortices. This has also been tested by several military air forces around the world using various kinds of airplanes. The benefit of doing this is that it's 10 to 30% more fuel efficient during long distance flights. The planes and birds basically hitch a ride upon the vortex caused by the plane or bird in front of them. Right now, your face, everyone's face, are covered with mites. You can't see them, of course, as they are indeed microscopic, but they are quite fascinating. To them, your face is their everything. They are born, they eat, they sleep, they mate, and they die on your face. You can wash your face, scrub your face, or even burn your face. These suckers will keep coming back like a clingy lover. We don't really know why these tiny face-conquering maggots love our faces so much, but we do know that they have no anus, yet still very much have a need to poop. Basically, they spend every waking moment screaming in agony, wishing they had a butt. I ask upon thee, thy magnificent face maggot god, please, please, I beg you, Give us a butt. No. Said I God, because he was German apparently, and tightened their non-existent keisters even more. When they finally can't take it anymore, you'll receive an explosive hot load of poop right on your face. I, I know, it sounds ridiculous, but uh, that's actually happening, and you'll be happy to know it's happening right now on your face. Right now.